My name is Gary L. Wimmer, and this is a course on lithomancy, the psychic art of reading stones. I wrote a book about this called Lithomancy, the Psychic Art of Reading Stones. But first, what is lithomancy? You can find a lot more information in my book, Lithomancy, The Psychic Art of Reading Stones, than I can present in this lesson. The first thing you want to do is select 16 stones to represent the 10 planets and the six aspects of life. Life, love, luck, commitment, timing, and place. There is a variety of stones available in all kinds of shapes, colors, sizes, with all sorts of unique characteristics. And I would suggest you look for colorful stones, especially stones that seem to have aspects that point in one direction or another, as I will show you here. Here's a picture of several regular stones. And here's a picture of the same stones with the arrows indicating the direction one might see the stone is pointing to another stone, a cluster, or to show the direction of energy. Now, if you would like to see the 16 stones I use and their meaning, Go to lithomancy.com, scroll down to the section that says how lithomancy works, and click on where the red arrow indicates 16 stones, and you will see my 10 planet stones and the symbolism, what they mean, and these six personal stones. Now you'll need a circle. I would suggest using a piece of leather or lace, tying it in a circle such that it's about 12, 14, 16 inches in diameter. Use this to form a circle which represents the environment. Stones that land within the circle happen within the 12 week period. Stones that land outside the circle can happen beyond the environment or in a later time or both. Now before I do a reading, I always charge my stones up. If I do a reading over the phone, I have the person say drop, and I drop the stones for them. If I do it in person, I allow the person to drop the stones. In either case, I drop them or have the person drop them about six to seven inches above the circle, above the center of the circle. Knowing how hard the surface is, knowing how much the stones will bounce, that seems to give a reasonable distribution of stones. Either way, I read the stones, how they land. Here's a photograph of my 16 stones. Here's a representation of that same pattern I made with Photo Impact, a program very similar to Adobe Photoshop. You'll notice that the stones are much larger in comparison to the circle in the Photo Impact images. 
I did that for illustration purposes. Again, the original photograph, the photo impact image. The original photograph, a photo impact image. The magic stone indicates timing. It can indicate when all the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted, and you're ready to go to the next step. The life stone is an indicator about your life, the direction, the satisfaction, the challenges. The distance between the magic stone and the life stone can be an indication of the passage of time. If the two stones are close together, as in quadrant one, the timing for this three-month period will probably be faster than normal. If the stones are distance apart, like from 3 o'clock to 8 o'clock, the passage of time will be slower than normal. If, as in quadrant 4, the magic stone and life stone are reasonable distance apart, the timing will probably go up and down during a three-month period. I've always suggested that readers should find their own adaptations to any system, including lithomancy. For example, many years ago I discovered that the area before 12 o'clock can sometimes represent the past area and indicate things, events, happenings that have happened in the past that are starting to affect the future or the present. And as you read like a clock, there are several different ways to consider which sections to read. One is to consider each section of the pie as shown, week one, week two, week three. But you can also consider the stones in the opposing week for example, in primary week one, from 12 to 1 o'clock, you can also consider the stones in opposing week one. Likewise, for primary week two, you can also consider the stones in opposing week two. For example, there may not be any stones that land in the two primary sections. Therefore, you can refer to stones in the opposing weeks. Remember, it's flexibility and creativity that make anything work. Now, you notice in these two pictures, that the Mars stone and the place stone are in different positions. In this picture, the place stone and Mars stone, around 1 to 2 o'clock, are pointing outside the circle. They're close to the circle, meaning the environment. They seem somewhat detached from the other stones. In this picture, with just the Mars stone and place stone in the center, implies the relationship between Mars with the commitment stone and the sun stone, and the place stone with Saturn and Venus. One can interpret quite different results just from the different placement of these two stones. Keep that in mind as you look at patterns, as you study the relationship between stones, their pointers, their direction, how they connect with each other. I came up with a couple terms that I use in lithomancy. One is pointers, which I've already shown you, which can be arrows, directions, pointing the flow of time, passage of energy, that sort of thing. Another term I use a lot is called clusters. And as you'll notice in this picture, in each of the quadrants, there are several stones. They seem to be related to each other. Now, these relationships depend on how the stones point, what stones they're next to, the meanings of the stones, and so forth. For example, in this picture, the luck, Uranus, and love stone in quadrant one seem to be sort of complementing each other, whereas in Quadrant 2, the stones Magic, Place, and Pluto seem to be maybe pulling away from the Moon. In Quadrant 3, the Saturn, Life, Sun, Neptune, and Uranus stones seem to make a circle, as if a universe, a wheel, moving forward. And in Quadrant 4, the Jupiter, Mars, and Mercury stone are pointing at the Commitment Stone. Maybe pressure, maybe luck, certainly with Jupiter, decisions with Mercury, and passion with Mars. These same stones are in each of these quadrants in this picture, but notice in quadrant one, now the luck and love stone are on top of Uranus. Quite a different meaning. The place, magic, moon, and Pluto stones in quadrant two seem to flow a circle, a smile, a spiral. In quadrant three, the sun stone seems to face perhaps a wall, a barrier of the life stone, Neptune, Saturn, and Venus. Those four stones seem to line up as if strong and determined. In quadrant four, the commitment stone seems to be a little separate from the other three. Jupiter seems to be pointing at Mercury, decision-making techniques, and Mars seems to be pointing at it. How to interpret each of these clusters or signs or lithomancy patterns in general is a matter of practice. But if you know the stones and you start practicing, the art will reveal itself to you. Now, I will describe a random example. This has nothing to do with a person. These are just stones dispersed within the circle. 
but I will give you an idea of how to look at the stones, the geometry, how they point, hoping that you can see some way that I interpret the stones as they are. Now, right in the center is Mercury. That seems to mean a lot of communication skills, decision-making, that sort of thing. The Life Stone and the Magic Stone are relatively close, and so that means that time will probably happen fairly fast, or at least not real slow and dragged out. The Commitment Stone in the past area seems to indicate commitments coming into play. Could be paperwork, could be decision-making, especially with Mercury in the center. Mars and the Sun at 1 o'clock. Mars is pointing out into the future. Seems like passion made by decision or choice along with the Sunstone could definitely lead to some passion in the future. In the second and the third week, the Love Stone, Uranus, and Magic seem to indicate changes in love, maybe changes in attitude, changes in feelings. Uranus can certainly present breakthroughs, and with the Magic Stone next to it, a good time for going with the flow, learning new things. From the third to the sixth week, the Moon, Luck Stone, and Venus seem to cooperate together. The Luck Stone indicates luck that the person has created. The Moon Stone represents femininity, imagination, the past, Venus representing relationships feels like there's a lot of femininity and feeling and balance coming in from the third to the sixth week. From the sixth to the ninth week, Pluto seems to indicate a lot of healing. Pluto does go through extremes, so it goes from one extreme to the next, which can also mean transformation, revolution. Neptune seems to indicate new dreams and plans, perhaps with spirituality, meditation, that sort of thing. And with Jupiter outside the circle pointing into the future, seems to indicate that Neptune and its effects, the plans, the spirituality, can lead to a lot of prosperity and expansion in the future. In the last quadrant, the Play Stone, Life Stone, Commitment Stone, and Saturn are all related, especially the Saturn Life and Play Stone. This can indicate fresh stability, a new feeling about life, a lot of learning. Saturn can represent universities, knowledge, it can also represent being held in check until you master certain situations in life. That's just a general reading based on the actual visual pattern and the meaning of the stones and how they point. Now it's your turn, and I offer you folks a challenge. Examine the next three pictures. Remember, you can stop the video at any point to do so. Look at the pattern. Look at the stones. Look at how they point. Remember the meanings of them. See if you can visually interpret what might be going on in the different weeks. Notice the distance between the life and the magic stone. Notice how stones point. Notice the clusters. And see if you can visually interpret some sort of meaning out of the next three pictures. Best of luck. Use your imagination. Practice. That's how we learn. That's the basic idea behind reading stones. It's like reading anything. I taught myself to see symbolism in everything all the time. Uh, in a way, I had no choice. Life showed it to me. Uh, and from there on, I uh, put that into play because I had a near-death experience in 77 and I learned lithomancy in 1980. And so it started making sense that, wow, it's symbolism. Mm -hmm.